mid-season quarterback switch at Florida. Doug Johnson, the number one quarterback, is out for today's game, serving a one-game suspension. Taking his place, an untested freshman from north of the border. Jesse James Palmer takes control of Steve Spurrier's run-and-gun offense. From Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University, today, number seven, Florida, takes on number six, Auburn. Hello again, everybody. David Steele along with Matt Moore. Thanks for joining us. What a big football game today on the Southeastern Conference. Conference and national implications for both teams. Well, David, that's right. The Gators have to take care of business today. If they can get through this game with Auburn and then win, win out from here on in, they've got a chance to play on January 2nd once again for the national championship. Well, obviously, both teams would like to have all of their weapons firing today, but the Gators are having to go with backup quarterback Jesse Palmer. A young man that, uh, according to his father, Bill Palmer, has been dreaded for this opportunity. A man that loves to play in the big ball game. And hopefully we've got a couple clips here to show you of Jesse Palmer early in his career. But it's very important that it's not his job to win the football game. He's got to go back, take his read, find his open receiver. But it's even more important, David, that that offensive line does a good job of pass protecting, giving him a chance to get good drops, scan the field, and find the open guy. Jesse Palmer, very talented freshman quarterback from Canada, but the question is how will he respond here in the, a pressure situation at Jordan Air Stadium, and if he does not play well, then we might see this guy, fifth-year senior Noah Brindise. Well, this is a young man that uh, has been here for some time. He has a pretty good grasp of the offense, and when given the opportunity in mop-up situations, has done a tremendous job of running the offense. Here we see him doing a good job of coming out of the pocket. He has a lot of mobility, has that senior leadership quality, and if Jesse Palmer cannot get the job done today, it's great to have a guy like Noel Brindis coming off the bench to give you that added spark. Well, on paper, Auburn has to feel real good about themselves at the quarterback position. One of the top QBs in the country is Damian Craig. Well, Damian Craig was not uh, really thought of much earlier this year, but he's shown the world. He's throwing for an average of 300 yards plus per ball game. He's thrown a touchdown in 11 straight ball games, and for the Gators to have a shot at beating the Auburn Tigers today, They've got to get pressure on it. They've got to stop him from having a big ball game here today. It's number six, Florida, number seven, Auburn, and we'll have the opening kick when we come back on Sunshine Network. The Auburn War Eagles are ready to do battle against the Florida Gators. Florida ranked number seven in one poll, number six in the other. And Auburn, likewise, six in one national ranking, and number seven in the other. Auburn is undefeated. The Gators' only setback last week to the LSU Tigers. It is a beautiful day in the loveliest village on the plains. 65 degrees, low humidity, and just a perfect day for football in October. Let's go on the field and check in with our sideline reporter, Larry Vitell. Well, David, you and Nat were talking about Jesse Palmer getting his first extensive, meaningful playing time here on the road against a nationally ranked opponent. That's a tough job, but Florida has been in this boat before. 1984 was the year Dale Dormany was injured on Tuesday of game week as the Gators got set to open in Tampa against the defending national champion Miami Hurricanes. Kerwin Bell stepped in and quarterback marvelously, although Miami came from behind under Kosar for the victory. Can Jesse Palmer perform like that? Can the Gators win on the road? What a story we have for you here at Jordan Hare. Well, it would be quite a story, fairy tale type material today at Auburn, Alabama. Interestingly, Nat Moore, the Gators won the toss of the coin and elected not to receive the football. I can't remember the last time a Steve Spurrier ball club didn't want to take the football and go with it. Well, I think Steve wanted to put his best team on the field early and by kicking off and deferring to the second half, you get your defense out there and give them a chance to set the tone of the ball game early on. Robbie Stevenson is ready to kick the ball off, and the Gators are in an unusual kickoff formation. They are not lined up straight across the 25-yard line. Instead, they've got players staggered, as you see now. Well, that's in hopes of uh, confusing the blocking scheme of these Auburn Tigers because uh, Marquis Cooper is a very... Dangerous return, man, averaging in over 31 yards per return. And Cooper has been very consistent, too. His longest return is 47 yards, so he's had a lot of 30 to 40-yard returns this season for Auburn. Auburn leads the overall series, but the Gators have won the last two, including 
a slugfest two years ago here at Auburn, Alabama, 49 to 38, back in 1995. We are underway from Jordan Hare Stadium. And Cooper goes down inside the 10 yard line. Nick Shirali was there to make the tackle on the Florida special team. Florida's defense gonna take the field first today as Coach Furrier elects to put his defensive crew on the field first. McGrew and Moten the tackles, Rogers and Cohen the ends. Linebackers, Johnny Rutledge, a Butkus Award finalist, Dwayne Thomas and Mike Peterson. Williams and Weary, the senior cornerback, Tony George and Tico Brown, the junior safety. Damian Craig, hands off to the tailback, and Rutledge is there to put down Rusty Williams. No gain on the play. Johnny Rutledge, outstanding linebacker, the junior from Bell Glade. As you look at senior quarterback Damian Craig, his name is being mentioned in Heisman Trophy type uh, phrases as of late as he really begins to challenge Peyton Manning coming out of the Southeastern Conference as a Heisman candidate with his play of late. Williams. And the Gators knock him down at about the 10-yard line. Free safety, Tico Brown. Was the first man on the scene. As you look at Auburn's offense, Williams and Beasley. Auburn has not had much of a running attack so far this year. Bailey and Goodson, outstanding wide receivers, two of the best in Auburn history. And the offensive line is very good. Victor Riley, all Southeastern Catherine senior out of Silicaga, and he is one of the top linemen in the Southeastern Conference. Craig out of the shotgun on third down and eight. Again, Florida is able to stuff the run. Cooper has nowhere to go, and Rutledge met him in the gap. Well, the Gators brought Johnny Rutledge on a blitz. Uh, they had the Tigers in a good third down situation to come with the blitz, and you know, the Tigers played it very close to the vest. They're backed up, they didn't want to take any chances. Johnny Rutledge does a good job of timing the blitz, hitting the hole, not giving Marquise Cooper anywhere to run with the football. As you see, that Gator defense in the backfield of the Tigers. Jared Holmes kicking it out from the end zone. Jacquez Green on one hop at the 50. Quez inside the 45 to the 43-yard line of Auburn. Brent Turner made the tackle for Auburn. And Florida has great field position after a 45-yard kick. And here is the freshman. Jesse James Palmer. Can he be another Kerwin Bell? And step out for the Florida Gators as an untested freshman and lead his team in a hostile environment. And already it's starting to get extremely loud. So this Auburn, D uh, this Auburn crowd has heard about how big the LSU crowd was and they're trying early on to get involved in this ball game. Well, somebody on the left side of the Florida line left early before the snap. We have a dead ball, false start, and the offense. The five yards from the first half. Referee after size four, assessing a five yard penalty. Zach Zadalis, number 74, is making his first start on the offensive line, a freshman from Alachua. And Zadalis was getting his first start. Ryan Kalick was a little over inches, tried to beat the snap count, and got called for it. Taylor on the draw. Back to the 45-yard line, Martavius Houston, the free safety, made the tackle for Auburn. Florida's offense, Fred Taylor, the leading runner in the Southeastern Conference, the fullback, redshirt freshman Ron Frazier, Doc West Green, one of the top receivers in the country, Jamie Richardson having a solid year, Dwight Edge makes his first start today at tight end. Offensive line, Collins and Carlisle the tackles, with the centers, Adelis and Taylor at the guard.
Auburn's pass is caught by Richardson. A couple of nifty moves. And Richardson has a Florida first down. Great individual effort by Jamie Richardson catching a little out route five yards down the field. Did a good job of shanking tackles, making people miss. And was able to get up field, get the first down before being brought down by Martavius Houston. Just a little safe pass out in the flat. There you see Richardson showing his quickness and then getting up field, knowing what he needs for the first down. Jamie Richardson, the sophomore from Tallahassee. Gator football at the Tigers 31-yard line. Palmer under pressure. Gets rid of the ball and a nice catch by Fred Taylor. Taylor on his feet inside the Auburn 10. Great job by Jesse Palmer of unloading the football as he had pressure in the backfield and was able to find Fred Taylor coming out of the backfield. Did a good job of finding the open guy under pressure as he's getting a lot of pressure from the linebackers, Neal and Spikes. He's able to get the ball to Fred Taylor, and Fred Taylor refused to go down as he runs over those little defensive backs, and it takes a big defensive lineman, Carlson, to come down and bring him down. Movement on the offensive line again. And the dead ball, all start. I think that was the tight end, white end. Right. Richard Freshman. Well, David, you're right. It was the tight end and the tackle. And, you know, these are the kind of penalties that hurt them last week. You know, with the, with the loud noise, it's kind of tough to hear the snap count. Auburn really has an outstanding defensive unit. Brumbaugh anchors that front three. Linebackers, Takeo Spike, the Butkus Award finalist. And the defensive backfield, a little young on the corners. Octavius Houston, an outstanding player. Green throwing it to the end zone. Touchdown! Trev Green throwing the football to Jamie Richardson and the Gators score on their first possession. Well, that's the kind of Gator offense that we're used to seeing. The quick strike where they go down and take control of the ball game early on. They get good field position. You march it down, and then you throw in a little wrinkle. You bring Jack West Green on a little end around, and he drops back and finds his running mate, Jamie Richardson, and throws a bullet for a touchdown. Beautiful pass by Quez Green. And the Gators are on the scoreboard four minutes into the ball game. Cooper's extra point is good. The Florida Gators march it in. Good field position as the drive begins. And it is Green connecting with Richardson. And the Gators are celebrating early in Auburn. Six on Sunshine. Jamie Richardson has just caught his sixth touchdown pass of the season. Freshman Jesse Palmer, two for two on the Florida touchdown drive. The freshman connecting on both of his pass attempts. And then Jack Les Green throws the touchdown pass to put Florida up seven to nothing. Stevenson kicks off and Cooper six yards deep and this time he'll drop to an end. Auburn will bring the ball out to the 20. Another look at Florida's touchdown. Well David in the NFL what they look for is a third quarterback uh, on Sunday in case everybody gets hurt and here we see Jack West the star wide receiver throwing a touchdown pass to his run running mate Jamie Richardson. That's the Florida offense striking quickly. Four plays and 43 yards. Florida Auburn, top 10 battles. Look at all the years uh, since 1983. These two clubs have both been ranked in the top 10, and there are some great football contests and that recent history in this series. Auburn trying to run the ball on its first possession. Frank goes to the air this time, and the ball is caught. Carson Bailey steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Elijah Williams covering for Florida. David, at that time, the Gators dropped back in a zone defense, and Elijah Williams just gave Carson Bailey entirely too much room. You know, you're always worried about these speed guys going by you, but, you know, you've got to be in the ballpark, so at least when they catch the football, you're hitting them. Here's another look at it. If you look at the top of your screen, good drop by Damian Craig, and Carson Bailey comes wide open, and there's no one in the picture for two or three seconds, 
Elijah Williams got to get a little closer to him so that he can be, be a major factor on that play. Auburn again from the shotgun. Florida's got the blitz on, and down goes Fred. Javon Kurtz got to him. Well, David, that time they came with the blitz by the linebacker as well as the pro safety, and they were able to create a lot of pressure, and Damian Craig, even with his great escape ability, was not able to get out of the pocket. Here you see Tony George coming on the blitz, forcing the tackle to come out and take him. Javon Kurtz beats two would-be blockers, comes down with the sack. Good pressure from that right side of the defensive line. That sets up second down at 17 at the 28-yard line. Fumble. Florida has recovered the football. Greg got level. Reggie McGrew. And then John Exitus was back there to recover the football. Boy, McGrew, the big sophomore from Mayo, Florida, he delivered a devastating blow to the Auburn quarterback. And Damian Craig never saw it coming. As you get pressure, once again, here comes the blitz. He doesn't see it coming. You've got Elijah Williams as well as Tony, uh, Tony George. Hit him as he goes back to throw the football. Good blocking up front. Fred Taylor pulls his way inside the Auburn 20 to the 19-yard line. Martavius Houston made the tackle for Auburn. Florida is doing a good job early in this game, controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. And that's what you got to do, David. You got to get command of the line of scrimmage. You got to establish the run. Force this Auburn defense to play run first, pass second. And if you can do that, the Gators will be successful. Running back to the eye, hand off to Taylor up the middle again. And Taylor is battered down to 16 by Takeo Spike. All Southeastern Conference a year ago. They had a big game against the Gators last season. Had 10 tackles against Florida at Florida Field. You look at the Southeastern Conference number one runner, Red Richardson. Well, the Auburn Tigers got a good linebacker core with Spikes and Neal in the middle, and they do a good job of stuffing the run. Third down for Florida. Taylor. At least a yard short of the first down. Spike. Very quick when the linebacker spot came up to make the tackle. Taylor tried to step over the top of him, but the bomber defense is an outstanding club. Well, Spike might get better for the tackle, but the guy that made this play is Neil, Leonardo Carson as he gets penetration, not allowing Fred Taylor to get up and over and get into the hole. Quick pitch to Taylor, running wide to the wide side of the field, and Taylor hammers his way for the Florida first down. Good blocking by that entire right side of the Gator football, of the Gator offensive line, as they just did a good job of getting wide and allowing Fred Taylor to turn up field, and there was like a wedge. Watch this wedge as you look at the right side of your screen. Here you see Rod Frazier, Mo Collins, and watch the whole crew just turn up field, and it's like a wave going forward. Florida leads 7-0. The Gators look for more. Midway in the first quarter. They run it again. Taylor stays on his feet inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line, and that is three tough yards picked up by Fred Taylor. Not a lot of running room there. Taylor somehow managed to pick his way through the line of scrimmage. It's, it's called quick feet, David. Quick feet. Watch the footwork of Fred Taylor as every time he starts to turn up field, there's someone in the hole. Watch the little quick move. Now watch him come back. Picks up three tough yards, and it's all because he's got that great feet with good back. Look hand. Taylor's keeping the ball on the ground. Just recovering the fumble. And they go with two tight ends on second and seven. Taylor again running up the middle. Inside the five to the Auburn three. Linebacker Ricky Neal made the tackle. Jesse Palmer, the freshman, has thrown only two passes in this first quarter. The Gators are keeping the ball on the ground and running it right at the Auburn Tiger defense. And running behind Zach Sedalis, young man getting his first start for the Gators. Freshman, right guard, and they run it right up his back. And so far, he's doing a commendable job of trying to get movement for this Gator offense. 
Third down and two inside the Auburn five. Taylor takes the hands off, and Auburn has them surrounded back at the five-yard line. Marcus Washington not fooled on the play. Gators had a lot of movement with Green moving in the backfield. It looked like they were trying to perhaps set up the end around, and then they came with Taylor, but didn't fool Auburn. Well, didn't fool Auburn, and Marcus Washington beats the tight end edge, and is able to get in the backfield, not giving Taylor anywhere to get turned up field. Did the wise thing. Get down, hold on to the football. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt by Talon Cooper. Billy Young, the holder. The kick is good. Florida stacks on three more. The Gators keeping the ball on the ground. And they take advantage of an Auburn Tiger fumble. Cooper's field goal makes it a 10 to nothing lead for the Gators. We could say some great things about the Toyota experience, but get some other opinions. Read the articles or the research that's out there. You'll find Toyota consistently ranks high among the experts, including people like you. And they have models for every need. Talk to someone who's had a Toyota for a while. They know. Shotgun now. They've got three receivers wide to the left. First and ten from the 21. Werfel back to throw. Firing down left side to the end zone. And it's going to be caught. And it's a touchdown. Redell Anthony. Redell Anthony. Redell Anthony. And Werfel has his sixth touchdown pass of the game. Oh, my. Oh, my. He's tied his career high. a week makes. Florida opening up last week and LSU was down 14 to nothing at about this time in that football game. The Gators did not want to find themselves trailing early in another hostile environment. And that more, they've come out and scored 10 quick points. And i tell you what that does. It takes the crowd out of the ball game and gives your offense a chance to operate where the offensive line can hear the calls and you're able to execute. Another great job by Robbie Stevenson to kick the ball deep into the end zone and force Auburn to down it and bring the ball out to the 20. Let's go to the field of Larry Vitell. Well, David, as you talk about the Gators getting off to a good start, keep this in mind. In 1995, Auburn got off to a 10-0 start against the Florida Gators, who were undefeated. The Gators came back and won that ball game. In 93, the Gators had a 10-0 lead, but Auburn came back to win. Obviously, Florida wants a 10-0 lead, but the last two Florida-Auburn games in this stadium, 10-0 wasn't good enough to win. Well, it's way too early to start putting anything in the book. 5.42 to go in the first quarter from Auburn. The Tigers come back out of the shotgun as Damian Craig wants to throw again. Craig can't find an open receiver and goes down at the 16-yard line, sacked by Mike Peterson, the junior from Alachua, and great job by Florida secondary. That is a coverage sack, man. Without a doubt, that's a coverage sack, but also a tremendous job by that defensive line and the linebackers. They were blocked. They kept coming as Craig tried to scramble around, and by time, they didn't give up. There you see a good job by uh, Mike Moulton coming in, and here you'll see Peterson coming in as Craig tries to turn up field, making the tackle, but a tremendous job of staying after the quarterback by that defensive line and linebackers. The Gators came into this game leading the conference in quarterback sacks with 27. They've got three already against Auburn today. Shot done again. They set up the screen pass. That's the fullback Beasley, and Beasley is tripped up in the 19 by Tony George. A strong safety. Well, what, a, what a season George is having for the Gators, only a junior. 
that's a tough play when you get a good athlete like Beasley out there in the open field. George made the play. Well, this play is just too slow in developing as the Gators were able to spell it out. There you see a good job of getting pressure, but look at the Gators coming into the picture. You see Tony George coming in, Reggie McGrew, all those Gators around the football. Good pursuit by the Gator football team. Craig was looking that way all the time. He never looked anywhere else. Gave the play away early. Third down and 11 for Auburn. Pressure, sack. Peterson again for Florida. Craig has been dropped four times here in the first quarter. And the difference is Bobby Stoops is bringing his linebackers and bringing a strong safety on almost every passing situation. And they're just too quick for these big tackles. As you see, Mike Peterson just outruns Geno James around the horn. There you see Tony George applying pressure, tight end trying to block him, but no one is quick enough to get to Mike Peterson. Holmes is punt end over end. Jack Claire's trying to beat him to the outside. And he'll step out of bounds. There's going to be a flag throw on the block. And uh, I think perhaps the clip is going to be called against the Gators. Tyrone Baker trying to spring Quez Green just as he was stepping out of bounds. And I think the Gators will be penalized here. Well, that's an ill-advised block. So. Well, they're going to wave the flag oh, off. Further consideration. And I tell you, David, if we if we get another look at it, Tyrone Baker did a good job of getting his head across and actually got his head in front. Even though to some of the officials it might have looked like he hit him from the back, if you can get your head across in front of the numbers, you've got a shot. We'll be back at Auburn in just a moment. They are nutty. Goofy. Sandy and just plain silly. From the creator of the award-winning television series Wild America comes a hilarious home video unlike anything you've ever seen. These are nature's fantastic follies. Fantastic Follies is a non-stop comical romp through the world of animals. It is not available in stores. Call now to get Fantastic Follies for just $19.95. Order now and you'll also receive Backyard Wildlife absolutely free. That's right. Both of these extraordinary programs are yours for just $19.95. Call now. For rush delivery, get your credit card ready and call 1-800-652-2112. That's 1-800-652-2112. Or send your check or money order to the address on your screen. Call now. Defensive coordinator Bobby Stoops. Boy, his team has really come out swarming the Auburn Tigers offense today. Coaching staff for the Florida Gators admitted after the game last week that LSU had not only outplayed Florida, but the coaches felt like they had been outcoached. So it's been a challenging week for players and coaches alike in Gainesville. The Gators have great field position again. Palmer's third pass is a strike to Jack West Green, and Green has a Florida first down at the 23-yard line. And David, there we saw the arm press of Jesse Palmer as you had Three defenders around Jock West Green, but the ball got there in a hurry on a curl route. It's been kept simple for Jesse Palmer through the first quarter. Now no huddle out. Vincent Palmer works out of the shotgun. And makes his first audible call. Auburn's got pressure, and Palmer picked it up nicely. The pass is complete to the piece Kareem inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. And the youngster has passed his first test under pressure here at Auburn. But David, he passes his first test here as he checks up, but the difference is the Gators offense has already taken the crowd out of the game, and they're able to hear the checkoff and the changes. Second and five. Palmer with pressure again. He just throws that up for grabs. Big play, Brad Ware, the sophomore. Palmer panicked that time, man, as he saw the pressure coming up the middle. Well, they had an un unblocked lineman coming straight up the middle. And I'll tell you what, the Gators have got to be 
feeling that that number 27, as we see Brad Ware here, comes right up the middle. No one blocks him, and he tries to get rid of it, but was not able to get it to Quesa Green, but Quesa Green stayed with him, was able to come back and avoid the touchdown off the interception. There you see Steve trying to make the correction. And the Gators will take time out. The crowd is back into this football game on the Florida turnover. And that's a good move by the Gator coaching staff. Call timeout. Go get your defense over there. Give them a time to get settled. Give this crowd a chance to settle down before you come up and let them snap the ball. Auburn has its best field position of the day. Florida leads it 10 to nothing. Flight to 7.30 on Sunshine. Freshman Jesse Palmer just threw an interception. Barna was on the march. The freshman felt pressure from a blitzing linebacker, and he just got rid of the football. Well, that's where he's got to take the sack. He got pressure from Tequila Spike, and he just aired it out as to where he thought his receiver would be. And Brad Ware stepped in front of Jack Ware's screen and was able to catch the football and get turned upfield. Auburn has not had the ball beyond its own 20 to start a drive here in the first quarter. The turnover has changed the field position. Rusty Williams had a crack on the right side of the line. Tony George was able to bring it down inside the Florida 45-yard line. Well, Rusty Williams come close to popping this thing. It's good job of blocking up front. He gets in the open field, breaks the tackle. But here comes Tony George into your picture to make the tackle, not allowing him to pick up big, big yardage. Williams, a sophomore, out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Johnny Rutledge shaking up, but up and uh, moving off the field under his own power. A key part of Florida's defense, the junior from Belgrade, appears to be all right. Now. Auburn Tigers trying to take advantage of Florida's first turnover of the game. The Gators lead 10 and I think late in the first quarter. Williams gets behind the line of scrimmage. Keith Kelsey, Darrell Owens, Mike Peterson, all three of the linebackers were there to make the stop and that'll force Auburn into a third down and they'll still need about two and a half for a first down. Well, Darrell Owens just destroys this play as he gets into the backfield, destroys the blocking and allows Keith Kelsey and Mike Peterson to come in and make the hit. Auburn, now third down and they need close to three yards to pick up a first down. Power eye backfield, and Damian Craig will call timeout. So the senior didn't like something he saw at the line of scrimmage. The Gators had him stacked up on the line. And a Heisman candidate walks to the sideline. Hey, Frosty, where are you going? I just thought I'd go for a swim. What? On a solar bear's run? Oh? You know, I'll be a little solar bear. IHO's coolest team. The Bears are back, hungry for victory, stalking the rest of the IHL. The Hunters will be denied and soon become the Hunted, because this season is going to be a pair. Gee, where are you going now? i got to get home and watch sunshine. The Solar Bears are on. The Orlando Solar Bears, all season on sunshine. Well, the third-ranked Gator volleyball team will host Tennessee Friday the 24th, 7 o'clock in the O'Connell Center. Student Appreciation Night. If you like more information, call the University Athletic Association. Big third down play for the Tigers. They'll line up the big guy in the backfield. Fred throwing it. It is caught. First down, Auburn. Mike Harris covering. And Auburn throws a little wrinkle. Into things, Kevin McLeod, the tight end, caught the over-the-shoulder strike from Craig. And this is what happens when you go with an all sellout, and Mike Harris gets lost as his man all the way. If he's there covering McLeod, the pressure gets to Craig because Javon Kirk, I mean Javon Kirk, once again, is right there hitting him as he releases the football. But Mike Harris has got to take care of his own responsibility. If he does that, the Gators stop him. And Cade Pennington now the tailback. Craig trying to soft touch it to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Well, that 
was a well-thrown ball, and Goodson laid it out, but could not make the catch. Well, well he's able to hit him right where he, he's supposed to. It, it just looked like Goodson was not able to get his hands together. The ball hit him on the left hand, but it was a well-thrown ball by Damian Craig. Boy, is this guy dangerous. Excellent touch. Can fire it in there. But also a very dangerous runner. Craig feeling the pressure. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, Auburn. Tight end, Tyrone Dillard. Well, that's what happens when you continue to come with the play. As you can see, Damian Craig did an excellent job of executing the play. It looked like they were going to screen the ball out to the right. He kept dropping and dropping, looking out right, and then comes back to his tight end. Tyrone Dillard, Tony George sees it, but is not able to get over and make the tackle as Dillard goes in for the touchdown. The extra point by Holmes is good, and Auburn is right back in it. Florida had the early momentum, but Auburn takes the Florida turnover and puts it in the end zone. The temperature might be dropping, but the heat are on the rise. Sizzling, sizzling the net. Blazing, blazing, blazing up the court. Burning, burning, burning up the NBA. Lighting, lighting, lighting up the scoreboard. You step on the court and you're going to get smoked as the heat is on. tight end, only his seventh career catch for Auburn, his second career touchdown, but it has put the Tigers right back in this football game, and the momentum has shifted back to the home team. Good job by Tyrone Dillard, uh, sneaking out in the middle of the field, blocking, and then Well, that was a near disaster. The kick hit one of the up men, I think Buck Gurley caught that football on the leg and Elijah Williams had to hustle over to the ball. I thought he might just fall on it. He managed a couple of extra yards and the Gators have poor field position. Here's Auburn's score again. And if you notice Tyrone Dillard at the top of your screen, he's blocking all the way, he's blocking all the way, then he sneaks out as everybody leaves to the middle of the field. And Tony George has got to make this play. He's got to make the tackle. Here he just hits him with his shoulder instead of wrapping up. And when you got a big man like this, you got to wrap up. Well, I was getting ready for a big hit from Tony George, but it didn't materialize, and Auburn got six. Florida goes back to the ground, and Taylor picks up first down yardage. Out to the 26-yard line, Larry Tasher, a freshman from Pitchard, Alabama, makes the tackle, and that's the final play of the first quarter from Jordan-Hare Stadium at Auburn, Alabama. It's Florida 10, Auburn 7. Once, skating from east to west, required an 8,000-mile trip around South America. One day, someone suggested a shortcut through Panama, a direct line to the other side of the world. Now, suppose a direct line existed in the world of finance. And with one phone call, a financial specialist could help you with everything you need to help your money grow. Some milk, please. She got the last one. Excuse me, I'll be right back. We need two specials. All right, let's not take half of them.
Jordan Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University on a glorious autumn afternoon. The Florida Gators ranked number seven, Auburn number six in the AP poll. Florida jumped to a 10 0 lead, but Terry Bowden's Auburn Tigers fight back as they take a Jesse Palmer interception and convert it into a touchdown. Bowden, very successful coach everywhere he's been. Bobby's son learned from one of the greatest, no question about that. Successful at Salem College at Stanford University, now in his fifth season as head coach of the Auburn Tigers. Freshman quarterback Jesse Palmer. Taylor, a loss of about six. Jimmy Brumbaugh, the junior from Keystone Heights, Florida, one of many Floridians on this Auburn team, and Takeo Spikes are there to make the tackle. And you can expect this Auburn football team to continue to bring five and six people because even if it's a run, they get people in the gaps, but if it's a pass, they get pressure on the quarterback until this Gator offense shows that they can pick up the blitz. Expect for the Tigers to continue to throw it at them. Second and 15. Palmer's pass is incomplete. Richardson is the intended receiver. Breaking over the center of the field. The ball just thrown too far out in front of him. He was open. Well, he's open, but once again, Palmer is getting hit by uh, Jimmy Brumball. Just as he releases the football, it's, you know, you cannot continue to get the quarterback hit every time he throws the football. Sometimes it's better to just hit him and force him to have an air throw than to come down with the sack. Here you see Brumba right in Palmer's face being hit as he releases the football. Dorsey, the middle guard, made the tackle, and it'll be fourth down for the Gators. And that particular play, David, was really doomed from the start. The Gators came with a three-man three -man route, and the Auburn Tigers only rushed three, so there was nowhere to go with the football. Jesse Palmer decided to pull it down, try to get as much as he can. Bobby Stevenson is back to punt the ball, and Marquise Cooper will return. Cooper, tall four, and makes the fair catch at the Auburn 41. The Tigers with the momentum and good field position. I'm Jamal Nashburn. I play for the Heat. I'm P.J. Brown. And this is what you want from us. We'll give you that, but we need something from you. Tim Conway's back, and he's hauling in a whopper. It's Dork Goes Fishing, this year's funniest comedy home video. Let Tim Conway at that master sportsman door show you everything you've always wanted to know about fishing. Go back in time to man's first fishing method. Let Dork show you what to wear, how to clean your day's catch, how to get in shape, the joys of fishing with your spouse, plus important boating and safety tips. Dork Goes Fishing is guaranteed to be the funniest fishing video you've ever seen. And it's not available in stores. So what are you waiting for? Call and order Dork Goes Fishing today. Call now and you'll get Dork Goes Fishing plus this official Dork floating keychain absolutely free. For rest delivery, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-652-2112. The funniest, the most outrageous Tim Conway is very best, Dork Goes Fishing. That's 1-800-652-2112 or send 1995 plus four dollars to the address shown on your screen. Order now. Hi, I'm Chris Thorne. You're watching Breakfast with the Gators on Sunshine Network. Florida Gators in a tight battle against Auburn early in the second quarter. Steve Spurrier talking with his offensive players on the sideline. 
as the Auburn Tigers will take over the football. And the head ball coach has had a lot to deal with, a lot of adversity heading into this uh, football game as you see the list of Gators who are down and out for this week. And I really think Terry Jackson is uh, such a valuable guy. This football team really misses his leadership on offense, Matt. Well, not only his leadership, but he was a guy, he was a, a, a Mr. Do-Everything, and wherever the Gators needed a lift, he could give it to them, and that's what they missed. Greg has time to throw, but the ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage by Reggie McGrew. Well, McGrew, and really all of the Gator defensive linemen, do a nice job. You see Willie Rogers getting their hands up as they attack, don't they, Nat? Yeah, but what they do is they do a good job of timing their jump. They go back, they see that they can't get there. They read the quarterback and jump just as he, as the arm comes up to throw the football. Good job by Reggie McGrew of getting up, getting up good and high. Arms extended, knocking that ball down. Second down. Greg has great protection again. He's throwing it deep, and Brown is there to knock it down. He had the best chance to catch the ball. I don't know who the intended receiver was. I guess it was Clifton Robinson, but he sort of came out of nowhere to get to the spot where the ball was going to land. Well, I don't think Damian Craig saw Kiko Brown at this time because he's trying to get the ball deep down the middle of the field, but the timing is way up. Anytime you hold the ball this long, it's tough to throw it far enough to get it to your receiver without the coverage being there. And you see Tico Brown had as good an opportunity to intercept that ball as Clifton Robinson had of catching it. Barber did have another receiver out there, but Robinson was the intended receiver. So just a box play by the Tigers. You said that the timing was all off. It's third down at 10. Swing pass incomplete. Auburn will have to turn the ball back over to the Florida Gators. Well, that's one Damian Craig would like to have back because he had Fred Beasley open in the, in, in the uh, flat out there and was not able to hit him the football. And, you know, those throws don't look like much, David, but they're so important because if you're able to hit that back on the run, it gives them a chance to catch the ball and get turned upfield. Good for the Gators that uh, Damian Craig was a little lost on that pass. Jared Holmes, all Southeastern Conference punter last year. And he really drills this one. Claire's Green from the 16. And a flag goes down. The Gators are really going to be backed up after the penalty is against Florida. 43-yard punt. And then more to be assessed against the Gators. And the freshman is going to be backed up deep at his end of the field. Well, it's been a game of mistakes so far. Both teams have committed one turnover. The Gators took an Auburn fumble and got three points out of it. Oh, they're going to wave off the flag again. I didn't think there was any contact. Yeah, that's a good call because Arnold did everything he could to avoid blocking the, the uh, defender. And as you take another look at it, you'll see that his arms are up and he does everything he can. By the official showing plenty of judgment by picking up the flag when there was no foul. Even without the penalty, Florida is still backed up at the 11 yard line. Palmer and Craig, the senior Heisman candidate, the freshman making his first start. And the score is Florida 10 and the Auburn Tigers 7. We'll return to Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama after this on Sunshine Network. If you've been waiting to buy a new minivan, the Dodge Big Summer Clearance plays right into your hand. You see, it's even bigger than you might think. It was up to $1,000 cash back on caravan or paid this low price for our seven passenger caravan, making it the lowest priced minivan in the industry. So hurry to the Dodge Big Summer Clearance, because if you haven't figured it out already, it's big. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. The human brain. Understanding how it works and what happens when it breaks down. 
requires the skill of world-class physicians. The University of Florida neurologists and neurosurgeons, together with a team of healthcare professionals, they're helping people live healthier every day. Consult your doctor about the Center of Excellence in Neurological Services at Shen. A sellout crowd at Jordan Air Stadium. Two top ten teams going at it today in the Southeastern Conference, and it is a whale of a football game with Florida leading Auburn 10 to 7. Let's go to the sideline. Larry Vitell. Larry? Well, David, something that's become an issue for this Florida football team is the number of hits the quarterback is taking. First in the Arkansas game when the Gators scored big, then in Baton Rouge, and again today, Jesse Palmer's getting hit on almost every throw, as Matt has pointed out. Offensive line coach Jimmy Ray Stevens huddled with his guys that whole Auburn possession to try to straighten out the protection and make sure Jesse doesn't get beat up. Hand off to Taylor, almost breaking through. The Keo Spike. Ricky Neal, the linebackers, made the tackle for Auburn. It uh, looked like Brett Taylor might be running in the open field there for a moment. Came very close to breaking this as the left side of that offensive line is able to get some movement. There you see a good job by Rod Frazier on Neal. Just a good job. There you see Spike trying to weed his way through all of that blocking and eventually comes up with the tackle. Palmer has protection and throws to the tight end, Dwight Edge. Edge will be spotted down at the 19. That'll still be three yards short of a Florida first down. Martavius Houston hit him and drove him backwards. That's the first career reception for redshirt freshman Dwight Edge, who also plays baseball for Andy Lopez's Florida Gators. There you see Martavius Houston coming up, making the hit, and uh, look like he's banged up his left shoulder as he's ha he has to come out of the football game valuable player in the auburn secondary preseason all southeastern conference one of their leading tacklers coming into the game and auburn will take time out i think they're trying to figure out what to do with mark keith uh, mark davius houston coming to the sideline we'll take a break It's not professional pressure cleaning. It's the amazing new Euroblaster. That's right, Euroblaster. Go from this to this to this at the turn of a dial. This V-shaped cleaning jet washes your car easier than ever. And the large shampoo chamber mixes soap and water to blast that dirt away. Turn this dial for a clear water rinse. Even add liquid wax to give your car a professional shine. Change to this narrow, strong jet to blast wheels and hubcaps clean. Dial in this down angle spray and clear loose grass and debris from sidewalks. Blast your patio clean as a whistle. Turn to the large straight jet and those glass doors are done in seconds. You can even clean out those clogged up gutters. Euro Blaster blasts everything clean and it's only $19.95. Order yours now. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-652-2112. Or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Call now, 1-800-652-2112. Hi, I'm Eric Kresser, and you're watching Breakfast with the Gators on Sunshine Network. Auburn Jr., free safety, Martavius Houston shaken up on the last play, sitting on the Auburn sideline, a key player in the Auburn Tigers secondary, and a lot of Auburn's top players hail from the Sunshine State. As you look at the Florida connection and go right on down the line, and that is uh, something we're accustomed to with all the great high school talent that comes out of the state of Florida. A lot of it lines up at Auburn and Alabama, Georgia. And what are things that uh, we know week in and week out when we play against top notch caliber football team, they've got some of that Florida high school talent on their team. Palmer will work down to the shotgun on third and three. He'll keep it on the quarterback draw. And it looks like Jesse Palmer is going to be very close to a Florida first down. Leonardo Carson. Number 95, a sophomore from Mobile, Alabama, was there to make the tackle, and we'll have a measurement. Palmer dropped back, and then when he stepped up, the walls just caved in on him, Nat. Well, what they try to do is to come out and try and fool him, and uh, once again, 
the Auburn Tigers did a good job of closing a would-be hole as the Gators come up a tad short. Auburn has held on third down, and it looks like they'll have a chance to hold on fourth down. I have seen, oh, here comes the punt team. Well, you never know with Steve. <laughs> Gators trying to get up on the line of scrimmage before they have to take a delay of game penalty. Now they've got them lined up. Low line drive kick. Cooper, fair catches the ball at the Tiger 36. Well, it looked like Steve Spurrier was thinking about going forward on fourth and inches, but he decides to punch the ball away. Larry, what have you got on the field? Well, David, you talked about Martavius Houston, part of the Florida connection for the Auburn Tigers. The word on him is good for Auburn and for Martavius. He has a bruise and a contusion just below his elbow. They're going to rub a little ice on it, put a bandage on it. He'll be fine. Auburn needs him. He's their most polished uh, guy in that secondary, also a mature leader for that Auburn football team. Well, Martavius Houston will be back. Fabian Craig working from the shotgun on first down. And he'll roll out little option action out of the shotgun formation. The Gators did a nice job of swinging him out. Mike Harris hit Craig after the two crossed the out-of-bounds line, but I don't see a flag. Well, it was, no, it was no harm because he was actually trying to slow down, and uh, it was just a collision because they both were going full speed. But you could have expected to see this option until the Gators showed that they're going to be able to stop it. When you, you know, here he's trying to hold him up, so that's why there was no call. This is not exactly what you'd call a bone-jarring tackle here as Mike Harris holds on, and no flag was thrown. But Mike Harris has to be a little bit more aware of the sideline and, and try and stay away from those type of situations where you put the officials into a situation where they get to make the call. Rusty Williams on the draw. He's short of a first down. Tripped up at the 45 by Tico Brown, the junior from Miami. And Auburn will be looking at third down and two. Good job of the Gators of closing a hole. There you see... Williams as he tries to come back to the right and Tico Brown sees the play all the way gets up from his uh, deep safety slot and is able to make the play not giving him the first down. Now these are tough situations for Auburn. They're 11th out of 12 clubs in the SEC and running the football and on third and two oftentimes they're tempted to throw the ball. They'll pitch it on the option. Cooper has the first down as he crosses midfield. The Gators bring him down at the 46. Tico Brown, the free safety, makes the tackle. And there you see another wrinkle forcing the Gators to play the option as you would think they would be going the other way with the back set to his right. It just gave them an opportunity to get the ball out to Marquise Cooper a lot quicker. The Tigers pick up the first down and keep possession of the ball. The field position changed as the Gators appear to be marching in for their third score of the first quarter and through an interception. Auburn returned it into Florida territory, scored on that possession, and the Tigers have had... Ball. Ball start on the offense. Tigers have had the field penalty. position advantage ever since the, the Florida Gator turnover. This will have a five-yard penalty assessed against Auburn. And basically, David, what they've done is taken back the momentum. Uh, now the Gators are on their heels. They're starting backed up and not able to get anything going, uh, not able to sustain any drive, where the Auburn Tigers are able to take control of the football, move it down the field, even if they don't score, to control the football game. First down and 15. Fred Pass is caught. Clipped uh, Robinson had no place to go. Rutledge was all over him. Well, of about four yards on the play. Well, David, he was forced to go to Cliff Robinson. He really wanted to try and get the ball to Tyrone Goodson on a bow out, but Tico Brown did a good job of getting over there, forcing him to throw to the shot man. As you see, Johnny Rutledge reading it all the way, comes out, makes the tackle. Rutledge was shaken up early in the game. 
Obviously, he's back, although he comes off the field with Kelsey and Cohen. The blitz. Craig gets away from one, gets away from two, and then the Gators bury him. X Knight has got there first to take Davy and Craig out of his rhythm, and then Florida had lots of help coming. Well, when you get the quarterback scrambling around, moving his feet, running for his life, it's kind of hard to get square to field and throw the football as John X Knight comes on the blitz. And as Craig turns and sees X Knight, he's able to avoid the tackle there. But he, watch Javon Kurtz not giving up. Here he comes. He gets a hand on it. And then watch that entire Gator defensive football team coming to your pitcher. Good defensive pressure. You begin to get the feeling that if Florida is going to win this game, its defense is going to play a huge role because offensively, the Gators have not had a lot going on since very early in the first quarter. Cooper has a long way to go to get a first down, and he's well short of it. And Auburn will have to punt the ball away as Mike Harris makes the tackle on Marquise Cooper. Tigers picked up one first down on their series. And Florida's defense turns the ball back over, and perhaps the Gators can get a little better field position after this punt. Well, David, what that was was Terrence out playing field position. He didn't want to take a chance on doing anything crazy, turning the ball over, give his defense a chance to get Get, the, get on the field with the Gators backed up. Boy, he really boomed this one. The Gators are going to let it hit, and they'll at least bring the ball out to the 20, which is better field position than the Florida has had in quite some time in this game. A strong-legged senior from Clinton, Mississippi, one of the top punters in college football, hit that one just a few yards too deep. Well, you can join Sunshine every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for breakfast with the Gators, highlighting University of Florida athletics, and then at noon, it's Florida football highlights with Steve Spurrier. Sunshine Network and the University of Florida, we play your game. So, David, the Gators need a drive. You know, they haven't done anything here in the second quarter. Quick toss. Grant Green. Simple play to execute as Auburn backed off Jack West Green to protect against the big play. And Jesse Palmer just takes what's given. Well, David, if I'm the defensive back and I got Quincy in front of me, I'm going to give him room. And then that's why he's able to catch so many of those little hit routes, but has tremendous ability to run with the football after the catch. Second largest crowd in Auburn football history. Fred Taylor trying to get first down yardage, but comes up a couple of yards shy. Takeo Spikes made another tackle for Auburn. A crowd today announced of 85,244 here in Jersey Stadium. Alabama in 1989. There's just a couple of hundred more. Auburn is undefeated. Florida, one setback last week in Baton Rouge. Third down play, Palmer throwing deep for Jacquez Green, and he overthrows it. Well, Quincy had a step on Antoine Nolan. But the ball was uh, slightly overthrown as Jesse Palmer went back and threw it early. He did a good job, though, David, of trying to hang it up, giving Quincy a chance to run under it, but it was just uh, too much up on the ball. Robbie Stevenson, his third punt of the day. Marquise Cooper is the deep man for Auburn. That was almost blocked. Another fair catch base, and again, Auburn will have the ball around their 40-yard line, which is where the Tigers have been taking control since about midway through the first quarter, after the Gator turnover, which really turned the momentum in this football game. Here's another look at what's happening as Javon Kurtz is letting his defender come inside of him, number 30, 
Courtney Rose, and he comes close to blocking it. You know, Javon Curtis has got to do a better job of taking some starch out of the inside guy, making sure that block first, giving the kicker a chance to kick the football. And again, Damian Craig has a chance to operate this Auburn Tiger offense. He has to unload quickly and does to his tight end. Good tackle by Mike Peterson. The pass is caught by Hicks Poor. Poor, a senior from Marietta, Georgia. Good, solid open field hit by Peterson. And that's what you call a picture-perfect tackle as Craig builds the pressure, hits Hicks Poor, and watch Mike Peterson put the head here. Where are the numbers? There's another look at the hit on Craig as you see Mike Moulton, pass rush special from that tackle position, getting into the backfield. Hand off to Cooper, didn't fool anybody. As Marquise Cooper loses two yards back to the 45, tackled by Elijah Williams. You know, the Gator offense has got to be more effective if for no other reason than to keep Damian Craig off the field. You give this guy too many opportunities, eventually he's going to make a big play somewhere along the line. Uh, and, and that's very true. You cannot allow your defense to play all day because eventually they will wear down in the third and fourth quarter. They start to cramp up and get tired, and pretty soon Damian Craig and those speedy receivers will hit him with a big play. Auburn looks at another big third down. They're third and six. Gators get the rush on, and Damian Craig goes down again. The fifth quarterback sack of this first half. Mike Moulton got to him, the big senior from Daytona Beach. And there you see Damian Craig down there giving his offensive lineman a piece of his mind as Mike Moulton comes free once again. He beats the tackle, gets in there, makes the sack. Just great pressure by Mike Moulton as Craig does not have time to set up and throw the football. Gator defense gets the job done again. get a good rush on and Holmes just does get it out of there beautiful kick Jamie Richardson from the 25 yard line that was a tough punt to handle that you might speak to that being an old return man yourself so the Gators take the ball over at the 28 Gator ball late in the first half Palmer dumps it to Rod Frazier fullback has his first catch of the game to Keo Spike Makes another tackle, the middle linebacker. Gain of about six for the Florida Gators. Richardson really did, though, a good job feeling that punt. His home hit it out of there high and spiraling. And it was going away from him because he's kicking with the wind. And uh, he did a good job of getting over, getting under the football, David, handling the football, and then getting as much as he could with no blockers because they went for the, for the block and then getting down. That's for Jesse Palmer. Quick toss again. This one thrown low to Jack Webb Green. Octavius Houston was covering, but the pass was just uh, thrown too low at the feet of the receiver. Well, that's one that Jesse Palm would like to have back. He just rushed this pass. They came with the blitz. His offensive line did a better job this time of picking up the blitz. He had more time that he could step up and throw the football, and that time he rushed it. Well, the Gators have not had a first down in a long time. They're third and four their own 35-yard line. And you know that Steve Furrier would at least like to give his defense a little rest here. That is a terrific catch if it is one, but it's not. Auburn really came in there and hammered Jamie Richardson. Antoine Nolan delivered the forearm shiver that shook the ball loose. Well, Jamie Richardson has a step. And Jesse Palmer does a good job of firing this ball in there, but Antoine Nolan comes off of Jack Webb Green and is able to make the hit just as Jamie Richardson gets his hands on the football. Bobby Stevenson punting it for the fourth time in the first half. This time he drills it out of there. Low line drive. That's going to be a very effective punt for the Gators. It'll be down at the 16-yard line by Tyrone Baker. But Stevenson, he overkicked uh, Auburn's return coverage. And the Tigers are backed up, back inside their 20.
can't remember the last time Robbie Stevenson punted four times in the first half. Florida's offense has not been very effective in the first half against Auburn. Tigers go to the ground again. Rusty Williams knocked down by Keith Kelsey. The Tigers have not effectively run the ball today either. It's been a defensive struggle in the first half. Florida scoring on its first possession. Getting an Auburn fumble. Kicking a field goal to make it 10 to nothing. Auburn took advantage of a Florida pass interception and scored its only touchdown after the intercepted thrown by Jesse Palmer and that all happened in the first quarter. There's been no scoring in the second quarter of the football game. Demontre Carter, number one, is now the tailback for the Auburn Tigers. And they give the ball to Carter. And Carter broke the tackle. He ran well last week against Louisiana Tech. And the freshman from Pensacola, Florida does the job picking up the first down. Little change of pace, bringing in Carter. The, you see him run the counter three, good blocking up front. Reggie McGrew gets an arm on him, but a good job of spinning out of the tackle by Carter, picking up extra yardage to get the first down. Carter had 63 yards against Louisiana Tech last week. Greg pass is caught by Carson Bailey. Bailey flipped by Williams at the 43-yard line. 114 left. Auburn has one timeout remaining. Well, Carson Bailey is able to run Eli Williams off pretty well here. Good job of picking up the blitzer. As you see, both backs come over and help out. And Eli Williams gets turned completely around, but a good, solid tackle after the catch. Bailey and Goodson, a pair of outstanding receivers for the Auburn Tigers. Nice move by Beasley after the catch. He stepped around Tony George, and then Kelsey made the tackle at the 41 of Florida. But David, I just have to wonder with Tony George, if you remember last week, he hurt his thumb, and we weren't sure whether he broke it or et cetera. But today, his effort on the tackle is showing you that he refuses to wrap up, and once again, he throws a shoulder at the feet of Fred Beasley instead of wrapping up, making the tackle. Harvard on the move with 50 seconds to play in the first half. Craig with protection. Bailey with the ball at the Florida 23. And Fred Weary can't cover him much better than that. Craig just threw a bullet in there. But Damian Craig is an experienced quarterback. He's a senior with a good arm. And if you give him time to throw, where he's able to go back in the pocket, and there's no pressure where he's able to step up, there's just no way you can keep him from completing that ball. Craig just threw that ball away. He had nothing happening, left or right. Good coverage on Goodson to the left side. Good coverage on Bailey on the right. And a smart play by Craig to stop the clock with 25 seconds left. The Tigers still have a timeout remaining. But, but even more so, David, as we look at Bobby Stoops there getting his defensive calls in, once he saw that he could not go to good, Goodson, he knew what he had on the backside, was able to throw it on the backside with the idea that if his player can't get it, it's going to be thrown away and out of bounds. Shows you that senior leadership of knowing the offense. 25 seconds to play in the first half. Flag down. It won't count. Play has been called dead. And I think the Gators had called for a timeout. They called for a timeout. The question is whether they gave it to him. Well, a flag is down on the far side of the field as well. The players had stopped playing. Uh, half the players on the field had, had shut down. There's no flags on the play. One team's on the timeout. It's a timeout. And uh, the situation made clear by referee Astor Sizemore. And we'll be right back with Auburn driving. Four seconds, Auburn's threatening to take the lead.
quick cross deflected almost intercepted by Harris but incomplete and that that uh, incompletion was caused by pressure because Hicks 4 came wide open over the middle of the field John Ignitis came with the pressure came on the blitz and here you see Damian Craig trying to get rid of the ball in a hurry and throws it behind Hicks 4 third down Auburn at the Florida 23 they still have one timeout the Tigers are two for seven in third down conversions today. Craig has time and the pass is caught inside the five. Carson Bailey held on as he took a blow from Mike Harris, or Goodson rather, with the catch and it's Auburn football. 14 seconds to go. The clock stopped while the chains were moved. And Craig downs the ball. Now the scoreboard shows one timeout left. Man, I'm wondering if that's incorrect, the way Craig is operating here. Well, I, I think that he realizes that not only does he have one timeout, which gives him the opportunity to still be able to run the football if they so choose to, but with the clock stopping because of the... The first down, here's a good look at, uh, let's go back and look and see what happens. As you see Tyrone Gibson coming through the middle of the field, Mike Harris knocks him down, but it gives him the first down. They got to stop the clock to move the team, so it gave him plenty of time to get his team up there set and down the football. Craig on a rollout, Kelsey pulls him down, and the pass is incomplete. Big play by Keith Kelsey. Big play by Keith Kelsey, but even a bigger play by Damian Craig of avoiding the sack, because if he's able to, to not avoid the sack, it forces him to use that last timeout, and the clock keeps running without the use of the timeout. Here you see he just unloads it. That's just tremendous strength by Damian Craig as he's able to get rid of the football with Keith Kelsey hanging all over him. It's a big play by both individuals as uh, Auburn is going to have to kick for a field goal. They've only got five seconds left in the quarter, and they'll try to tie the score. So the Gators, at least, were able to keep Auburn out of the end zone. Darren Holmes is two for four at field goal tries this year. A 20-yard attempt is good, and this football game is tied with no time on the clock. At the end of the first half, Florida scored the first 10 points. The game turned on a Florida interception. Auburn took the momentum, made it 10-7. Damian Craig drives the Tigers down the field, and this ball game is tied at the end of the first half from Auburn, Alabama. Once, there were two railroads in America. And the well, but the Gators came with the blitz. So the first half was really blitzing from both teams, setting the tempo of the ball game. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half. The Gators got on the board first. A little trickery from Steve Spurrier as he lets Jacquez Green throw the touchdown pass. Yeah, just a, you know, something that the Gators have in their arsenal where they like to bring Jacquez around. And most of the time he runs the football, but this time he pulls it down and goes to Jamie Richardson. Gators' defense was really strong. Had five quarterback sacks of Damian Craig in the first half. And here's partly why. They like to come off the corner with the blitz. As you'll see, John X. Knight is coming to your pitcher and shakes the ball loose as Reggie McGrew recovers it, giving the Gators good field position and a chance to add more points. Florida had a 10 to nothing lead and had momentum in the game until this point midway in the first quarter. And here's the blitz again. Uh, Tico Spike comes up the middle, is able to force an errant throw by Jesse Palmer, and Ware is able to catch the ball, Brad Ware, and get upfield. Jock West is able to keep him from scoring the touchdown. Just a few moments later, senior quarterback Damian Craig showing great composure. He makes the Gators pay for the mistake. And this is a, you know, they, the Gators came with their little trick play. Now here come the Tigers as they run a tight end sneak, and they're able to hit Tyrone Dillard as the, the middle of the field opens up, and Tony George is not able to make the play. And it's a 10-10 tie at the end of the first half. Look at that first down total. The Gators, only five first downs. They're putting a lot of pressure on their defense to have to be on the field a lot of the time in that first half. And that's entirely just uh, an inept offensive football team for the Gators because when you start to look at, they're rushing in the ball for 43 yards, but only 89 yards passing in the first half. They've not been able to get much accomplished on offense. Let's go down to the field and Larry Battelle. All right, David, appreciate it. Right down here on the sidelines, joining me
me is Terry Jackson, whose season ended due to a major reconstructive knee surgery. And Terry, first of all, talk about the knee. How did it go, and how are you coming along? Um, I had my surgery, and it went pretty well. And uh, I just got off crutches today, and I'm feeling I'm walking okay. And I started rehab about a week ago, and uh, things are going okay for me. Terry, you're such a big part of this Florida team. How tough is it for you to be on the sidelines watching, especially in a big game? It's definitely hard to watch. It's two weeks in a row we've had, you know, really big games, and I. And I, I wish I could be out there with the guys, but I know they're going to go out there, try their hardest, and, uh, and hopefully be successful. How have you uh, spent any time with the running backs, try to help them get themselves ready for these ball games? Oh, definitely. You know, during the game or before the game, I look and I go to still go to some of the meetings and try to see anything that I can tell them to help them. So, uh, if we got a few young guys out there, and Fred, uh, I do anything I can for them. We've got one year left. We look forward to seeing you in '98. Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready already and looking forward to it. Okay, good seeing you, Terry. Thank you. Terry Jackson, outstanding running back for the Florida Gators. What a terrific part of this team he is, and boy, do they miss him blocking for the Florida quarterbacks here in 1997. Let's go back upstairs to David. Boy, do they, Larry. Not just blocking, but making all kinds of plays. You look at freshman Jesse Palmer. Palmer getting support from his teammates and head coach Steve Spurrier. Jesse completed 7 of 12 in the first half for 77 yards and that one costly interception. Gators get the ball to start the second half and a 10-10 tie from Auburn, Alabama. And Holmes kicks it deep. Jared Holmes, a strong-legged kicker, forces the Gators to down the football and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. 10-10. Florida scored 10 in the first quarter. Auburn got 10 to tie up this football game. Uh, their final drive, a very impressive late second quarter drive. It took them from one end of the field to the other. Ending in a short field goal. No backs for Palmer. Yes, he throws it, and it is caught by McGriff at the 35. Boy, there is a lot of pressure on this youngster, Jesse Palmer, standing back there in his first start with no running backs to help protect him, and a line that has struggled to, to pass block, and five receivers standing out there did a good job standing under pressure and throwing a strike to Travis McGriff. Well, well here, here you see, he knows he's going to get hit just as he's releasing the football, but there you see him stepping into the throw as he gets hit right at the release of the football. Now under center with two backs behind him. Palmer's throw is overthrown. Picked off, Brad Ware's second pick of the game. Auburn takes the football at the Florida 36-yard line. And the interesting thing about it, David, is every time the ball is being picked off, it's being thrown down the middle of the field where guys are sitting back, got great vision, and this was just an overthrow. Had a little bit uh, too much juice on it, and the ball sort of sailed on him. He knows he's going to get hit as he gets pressure from Dorsey. But the ball is just overthrown. Had a little bit too much, much mustard on it. As Brad Ware is able to come down with the pick. This is the second week in a row that number 27 has been able to come up with two interceptions to hurt this Gator football team. Not a lucky number for the Florida Gators for sure. Correct pass deflected. I think somebody got a piece of it at the line of scrimmage and it is overthrown. Well, it's Willie Rogers, Willie Rogers, excuse me, didn't mean to cut you off there, but Willie Rogers was able to get his hands up and uh, bat it down. Damian Craig in the first half completed 10 out of 19, 139 yards and a touchdown. Did not throw an interception, he did fumble once on a quarterback sack, which helped Florida pick up three points in the first quarter. Auburn first half possession. You see the touchdown on the 49-yard drive and the 81-yard drive. It was very impressive to close out the second quarter. This is the freshman running back, and he's tough to bring down. Running east and west primarily, but still, Demontre Carter comes up with pretty good yardage as Weary finally takes him down at the 31. A five-yard gain on the play, but he ran about 25 to get it. Just a good job of running, refusing to go down by Carter as he starts out to, up the middle and sees some room outside. And there you go, Tony George, once again, not able to make the tackle. And, you know, this guy's been a stalwart for this off uh, defense. But today has not been able to come up with the big play when needed. 
Robert is three of eight in third down conversion. Craig feeling the pressure. Great play by Javon Kirst. He slapped the ball free before Craig could unload it. Well, David, we saw the speed of Javon Kirst. As we all know, Damian Craig is one tremendous athlete, and Javon Kirst ran him down and is able to swat the ball away as he makes the sack. Auburn Tigers are extremely lucky here. Now watch Javon Kirst come into your picture. Damian Craig feels the pressure, but he's not able to get away, and the Tigers are lucky because the ball goes out of bounds as it's knocked loose by Javon Kirst. Well, the speed of Kirst, I think, surprised Damian Craig. High kick. Going to hit inside the 10, and it's going to be down by Auburn. Great punt by Jared Holmes. The Tigers have backed the Gators up inside the five-yard line. So David, what the Gators need to do is they've got to get back to field position. You know, they've been playing the entire second quarter as well as the early part of the third quarter back in their own territory. It is time to try and gain field position as we see Noel Brandeis coming on the field. Noel Brandeis, the fifth-year senior, a former walk-on, awarded a scholarship just in the spring. He'll hand off to Taylor. Of course, Auburn is looking for the tailback to carry the football, and they're keying on him as he brings the ball out of the backfield. Well, and, and one of the things about the 3-4 defense or the 52 defense, however you would like to uh, call it, it's made to go against the run. It's not good against the pass unless they do a lot of blitzing, which they've been doing today, but it stands people up and it gives them a chance to flow sideline to sideline. Red dives. 35 plays under center coming into today's game this year. Taylor, good blocking at the line of scrimmage. That's a big play for Florida to bring it out of the shadows of that north end zone and pick up first down yardage. Good blocking by that left side. Cooper Carlisle, Ryan Kalick, and then just a good individual effort as you, you run by Ryan Taylor. But look at the receivers out front doing a good job as you got Nafis Kareem and Jack West Green holding their block, allowing Taylor to pick up the yardage for first down. Gators run the ball out from inside their five-yard line and keep it on the ground with Taylor. Tough inside yards by number 21, out across the 25 to the 27. That is good for another Florida first down. And that offensive line with Noel Brandeis in there has decided that they're going to move some people and Fred Taylor is running hard. Fred Taylor, the senior, showing his leadership, making big plays in the third quarter when his team needs him the most. Taylor, the call again. Taylor, three or four. Brings it out across the 30 before Ricky Neal, the linebacker. Martavius Houston, who was injured in the first half, but is back. Helping on the stop as well. Well, the offensive line are doing a better job of getting a hat on, and then you got a little isolation with Rod Frazier going up in there. They're able to get a hat on Sakia Spike. So what, what you've got to have is the guards have got to get some push and be able, be able to pick off those linebackers on the move. That's Taylor lined up wide to the left as Brendice will throw his first pass. A strike to Kareem over midfield of the 48-yard line of the Auburn Tigers. And the Gators are moving. The drive began at their own three-yard line. They keep it on the ground with Taylor. Brendeis goes over the top to Kareem. And all of a sudden, the Florida Gator offense has life again. Well, this is what happens when you establish the run. All of a sudden, linebackers don't get those good deep drops. You're able to just drop it in. And Brendeis is able to do here with Kareem. Brendeis knows the Florida system. He's been in it for five years. Taylor, brought down by Spike. No game. Well, there's something to be said, Matt, for just uh, knowledge, smart, experience. Uh, Brindice doesn't have a lot of game experience, but 
He's been in the program, and he knows what Steve Spurrier wants. Well, here we see once again a, a slow developing play, and this Auburn defense is just too active for that kind of stuff because now the offensive lineman have got to hold that block for a lot longer. And to give Spike, you know, he, he's an All-American or a preseason All-American that has a chance at the Big Buckets Award, so we'll see him make those types of plays. Brent dives out of the shotgun formation. Nice protection, a wobbler that's overthrown. I don't know if that was deflected. It might have been at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third down and 10 at the Auburn 46. Steve Spurrier giving the play to Billy Young, the backup quarterback who signals it in from the sideline to Noah Brindai. But even if they're not able to complete or convert on third down, they've gained the field position back, and that's what they had to do. Get it out from in there, inside their own territory. Auburn's coming with a blitz. Brindai throwing. McGriff with the catch. First down, Florida. He didn't have much time, but he didn't need a whole lot of time as McGriff just ran a quick slant and picked up the first down. And I tell you what Noah Brindai did here, David, that was excellent, and, and you know his senior leadership is that he throws to a spot. They got the blitz. He's got Travis McGriff out there. He just throws the ball to a spot. Travis McGriff comes into the pitch and makes a catch. Tremendous play by both of these guys. What a job by McGriff, the junior out of Gainesville, catching the clutch pass on third down and 10. Florida's first third down conversion successfully of the afternoon. And the senior directing the team from its own three-yard line on this drive. Lots of time for Brendeis. Now he's got to make a decision, and he almost made a bad one as he overthrew the tight end edge. And I'll tell you, number 13, Antoine Nolan, was uh, in fast pursuit of that airborne football and just couldn't get there in time. And I think that's the problem that we find with these Gator quarterbacks. They're so used to making plays that when there's no play there, they still try and make one. As we see Noah Brandeis almost makes the cardinal mistake of throwing in the coverage instead of just accepting the loss or getting rid of the football. Well, if you're going to get rid of it, go ahead and get rid of it. And that time, uh, a little too close for comfort for Florida as Brandeis Brings his club up to the line of scrimmage, and Auburn's defense will take timeout. The Florida Gators, led by the fifth-year senior, the former walk-on, on the move in Auburn territory. You've been waiting. Second largest crowd in Jordan-Hare Stadium football history. 85,244 packed into this football stadium, and they are seeing a great college football matchup between two top 10 teams, Florida and Auburn, tied up 10-10. Gators starting to just drive on their own three-yard line. Very impressive drive. Nine plays has gone 67 yards so far. Brindise, the senior, in relief of Jesse Palmer, has completed two out of four passes on the drive for 40 yards, and he's been cool, calm, collected back there, as you mentioned that, and maybe that's what this ball club needed right in this particular situation. Right now, they need some leadership, and if they're able to go down and score, that, that would be a tremendous boost, boost for this Gator football team. Four wideouts, no backs. Brindai's almost intercepted, and that would have been all she wrote as Larry Kasher was going to go 70 yards for a touchdown, stepping in front of Travis McGriff. Now, Brindise does not have the cannon arm that Doug Johnson and Jesse Palmer possess, and this almost cost them. Well, not only does he not have the arm, but the timing was off. You know, Travis McGriff goes down, runs the curl route, Kasher slips down and still is able to almost get there to make the play, and that's because Brindise looked left first and then tried to come back across the field. McGriff, another big catch from Brindice inside the Auburn 20. It is a Florida Gator first down at the 17. Good execution by both Noel Brindice and Travis McGriff as he's able to beat Antoine Nolan. He throws it a little post route. He just throws it to a spot. McGriff does a good job of catching the football with the man draped all over him. 
Gators on the march, an incredible drive from their own three-yard line. Brendeis now has Taylor behind him. Change in the play. The play clock is at one, and the Gators just got to snap off. Taylor running hard north and south to the 10-yard line. And it's amazing the Gators were able to get this play off, David. There was some confusion. Rod Frazier was sort of confused there in the backfield. Wanted to call timeout. And finally just decided he'll put his hands down and he'll just go up and hit the first blue shirt he sees. And so let's play a Taylor run. Not a bad plan right now for the Gators. Give the ball to number 21. And they do it again. Taylor decked at the line of scrimmage by Jimmy Brumbaugh. Talented Auburn defense. Especially tough inside the 20. Well, as I told, I stated earlier, the tough thing about trying to run wide is that you've got a three five, a three four, where you've got five people standing or six people standing, and they have the ability to flow to the football. Florida will use a timeout. Florida's first timeout of the second half. They're at the Auburn 10. We'll be back. Sunshine Network is brought to you in part by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota every day. And by AT&T Wireless Services. It's all within your reach, AT&T. Third quarter, third down. Gators at the Auburn 10. because the Auburn Tigers was in the perfect defense. They had an in and out on Jack Ware's green, and Rob Pate never saw the ball. That's also what you call a 97-yard touchdown drive under extreme dire conditions in Auburn, Alabama. Gator fans are celebrating, but there's a lot of football to be played here. That Gator offense showing some signs of life for the first time since midway in the first quarter. Collins Cooper's extra point is good. The Gators are back up by a touchdown. What a big-time drive by the Florida Gator offense. Here's another look at the touchdown pass from Brent Dines to Green. Well, one of the things they say, you know, guys like Jerry Rice get open and catch for a touchdown because people are scared to death that they make mistakes. And there you saw a perfect example of what Jock West Green brings to the table as Rob Pate had just totally lost sight of the football. And you got to feel good for that young man, Noah Brendeis, the senior. The walk-on has waited for his opportunity. It has finally come, and he has risen to the occasion at Auburn. <laughs> Directing the Florida Gators to a 97-yard touchdown drive, and the Gators have taken the lead at Auburn. Let's go to Larry Vitell. David, the Noah Brindai story is a great one for the Florida Gators. Here's a guy who walked on, just wanted to be a part of a big-time program, spent some time learning the offense. Well, he learned it well as he finds Jacquez Green on that slant for a go-ahead touchdown. But this is a guy who saw a sophomore beat him out for the number one job this season. This week, a freshman beat him out for the start. Did he mope? Did he sulk? No. Noah Brindai's continued to work at his game, get better ready to help this Florida football team. And after Jesse gets sick early in this third quarter, Noah Brindai leads Florida on one of the long and most important scoring drive of the 97 season. Well, you really have to feel good for that young man waiting patiently for an opportunity. And man, did he deliver on that drive. Marquis Cooper is going to down the ball one yard deep. Playing it safe, Auburn will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's see if the Gator defense, which now should be well-rested, Nat. That was a problem in the first half when the Gators continually went three and out. That 97-yard drive is uh, a very positive thing for the Gators on several different fronts, isn't it? Well, I started out talking about the Gators needs to gain field position. And, and to our surprise, Noel Brandeis took him down, was able to put points on the board. And now it's time for the Gator defense to step up and go you know, three and out and give it back to the offense while they've got the momentum. We've got a great football game and still 7.43 to play in the third quarter. 
Craig has time and throws incomplete. That is unusual to see Craig and Carson Bailey miscommunicate on a timing route, but that's what happened there. Is Craig had plenty of time, but Bailey ran a route, but it uh, just didn't connect for him. Well, he had time, but he started to feel the pressure. Now you see him throw it a little bit early as he tries to get rid of it, and Bailey was in the process of trying to run Eli Williams off and was not able to get back to the football. Damian Craig, the Heisman candidate. This Auburn football team undefeated. The key to that, a three-point come from behind win in Baton Rouge earlier this season. Craig feeling the pressure again. Brad down, he did throw it at the last second, but it is incomplete. Somebody, I think Moulton, had him on the collar. I don't know whether it was Moulton or Javon Kurt, but once again, Damian Craig shows tremendous risk, but this is a mistake. He takes a chance. He's trying to make a great play. All right, that might have been a hold there. Javon Kurt has him, and he tries to get rid of it. And at that time, you know, those are the kind of balls that end up as interceptions where it would have been better to just take the sack. He dodged the bullet that time. Third down. Auburn had movement on the line, their left tackle. And I think it might have been DeMarcus Curry, 69, that moved. And that'll be five yards against the Tigers. That's only the second penalty assessed against Auburn. You see the Tigers' sideline. And now, a look again. Well, well the guard and the tackle both moved. I don't know which one moved first. It was simultaneous. Well, they, they heard that phantom <laughs> snap cap. Gators with the nickel back. Boy, Craig has been under pressure all day from that relentless Florida defensive front seven. Craig is going to air it out for Carson Bailey. Williams is step for step for him, and the pass is thrown out of bounds. Great coverage by Elijah Williams. Bailey could simply not separate himself for the senior cornerback. Well, there you saw the experience and technique. Technique was the name of the game as Eli Williams was able to force Carson Bailey off the playing field and was able to keep his body between him and the ball. Great job by Bobby Stoops' troops. Oh, that's a new one. Bobby Stoops' troops? Well, they did the job. <laughs> Whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and they played a, a fabulous game. Well, coming in here, you had to feel with uh, Doug Johnson not able to play that it, the Gators had to turn it up a notch defensively. Press Green didn't have anywhere to run with the football. He caught it, looked up, big 62. Brett Turner was standing right in front of him. Turner was able to make the stop. Florida takes the ball, though, in good field position. Taylor running the ball. Stop short of the 50. A gain of two. Jimmy Brumbaugh, the junior, one of many Floridians. He's out of Keystone Heights, just outside of Gainesville. All-conference freshman in 95. He's played well against Florida every season. This is his third shot at the Gators. He came in with 15 career tackles against Florida and probably has five or six already here today. Looks like Auburn's going to come with the blitz. Here they come. Green, did he hold on? Yep, Brad Ware gave it all he had, but Quez was still able to hold on to the football. At the 45 of Auburn, the Gators are third and three. Well, Quincy pays the price for this reception as he knows he's going to get hit as he goes up high. And Brad Ware just came up and put a hat on him. And here you see Noel Glendice doing a good job standing there and really should have been a flag call on Jimmy Brum Brumball as he hit him late. He got away with one that time. Glendice, little turf, caught up the left side of his helmet. Noel wants timeout. It's third down and three. Brendive wants to make sure the Gators have the right play on. Florida now with only one timeout left with 5.51 to play in the third quarter. 
and Henry type alignment and it is incomplete intended for Green and Auburn has picked up the football it's been waived and incompletion as the Tigers Martavius Houston carries it in if it's a lateral and that's a free ball well the line judge has ruled it off as an incomplete pass but that was close yes and it was you have to be extremely careful when you throw that pass that you get a deep enough drop that you get a deep enough drop that you're throwing the ball forward. Well, Auburn seemed to be prepared for that particular play. They had people all over the, the football. Well, well, the Gators were fortunate it didn't go for six the other way. Well, I think they've seen it quite a few times. Jack West Green, to his credit, saw that and tried to go to meet the football, but the ball was a little bit behind him where if he'd have been able to make the catch, he might have been able to get the first down. The ball is into the end zone. Auburn will have the ball in its own 20. Robbie Stevenson trying to deaden it inside the 10. Got a little too much leg into it. Number seven, Florida in the Associated Press poll. Auburn number six in that same national ranking. But the Florida Gators have battled today under extreme odds without their starting quarterback. He's back home with a one-game suspension. The freshman quarterback unable to get the job done and move the offense. Fifth-year senior, the third-string quarterback, comes in and has done a wonderful job. And the Gators have dominated the third quarter, as that graphic just indicated. This is the freshman Carter, and the Gators have him, and the ball is loose, and it's a free football. A Florida player got down there quickly, but an Auburn guy may have wrestled it away. There is no signal yet. Second down, Auburn keeps it. Boy, there was a Florida man down there. I think it might have been Thomas. We'll have to see who's at the bottom. Yeah, Dwayne Thau, or McGrew, perhaps. Reggie McGrew had a shot at it. Good, solid tackling. Good ball tackled by Mike Peterson, shaking the ball loose. As you see it come out plainly and clearly. And the Gators fighting each other, Fred Ware and Reggie McGrew. But McLeod was able to come in and take it away. Boy, I don't know how Auburn got that football, but that's a big break for the Tigers. It's second down and 13. Craig feeling the pressure again. Almost a Florida interception. There's a flag thrown about 25 yards up the field. Carson Bailey and Fred Weary battling over there, and we'll see what uh, which direction the flag goes. Well, I tell you what, there was one of the Auburn offensive linemen that was keeping uh, Florida brush off. They haven't called any holes down here today. And I'm not sure if uh, there shouldn't have been at least a couple. We have a holding on the defense. And there is one. Penalty, automatic first down. And it goes against Florida's defense instead of Auburn's offensive line. I think that's going to be called over on the outside on Fred Worry, who was locked up with Carson, Carson Bailey. The first down for the Tigers, automatic at their 27. Greg can't find an open man again. Another near interception by Elijah Williams. Damian Craig has thrown seven consecutive incompletions for Auburn. And that's due to the pressure that's being put on by this defensive line. This time, the Gators drop back in a zone coverage. Do a good job of getting good deep drops, keeping an eye on the quarterback. And Damian Craig is having to move around the pocket, not able to set his feet, and almost throws the air and passes. Eli Williams nearly comes up with the interception. Well, he had 15 Clifton Robinson open, but couldn't find him over on the left side of the field. Second and set. Option. On Steve Cooper. Gators are all over it. A gain of only one or two. Tony George, very good job. 
playing the option on Montez Cooper and Damian Craig. It'll be third down. And that's the guy that all year has come up big. And so far, this ball game has struggled a little bit there, David. And now you see Tony George knowing that, you know, it's time for him to step up and make some plays coming up big for the Gator defense. Damian Craig. This is his 11th third down conversion opportunity. getting pressure again and the pass is caught picks poor and Auburn has the first down at the 39 yard line well, let's give Damian Craig a lot of credit as he was able to get the ball to hit four because Eli Williams comes on the blitz Damian Craig sort of smells it out and look at watch him step up avoid it and then he goes back and starts to look downfield to find his open receiver hit four as he comes across the middle of the field Good job by Damian Craig showing you that senior, senior leadership as he steps forward. And he knows he needs a lot of yards for the first down, so he doesn't take off and run. Finds an open receiver. Cooper broke away from George. Couldn't get away from Mike Peterson at the 44-yard line. Peterson has had a big game for Florida's defense. Well, the Gators are showing the blitz and they're backing out of it and you know one thing you can't do with Damian Craig is give him time because you know he's a veteran he knows that if he can't get the ball downfield he's got Marquis Cooper coming underneath he just dumps it off to him trying to pick up positive yards Auburn goes with a no huddle and the ball fumble Craig picks it up incomplete Boy, the Tigers have been pretty lucky on this particular drive. They've fumbled it twice now, and nothing bad has happened to them yet. Well, they've been, they've been extremely lucky as this ball here goes to spray. He takes his eye off it, and then Willie Rogers takes the wrong angle, and Craig's able to step around him, get up field, and then get rid of the football, avoiding the sack. Ten five, ten five, Another third down play for Auburn. Late in the third quarter. Robinson, first down, Tigers. Another big play by the senior quarterback, Damian Craig. Gators, once again, set back in the zone. And if what happens when you give Damian Craig time is that he's going to find an open receiver. He's come with a five-man rush. Clifton Robinson comes underneath. This time Craig has good protection. And he gets away from Moulton somehow. The pass is thrown away. What a job by Damian Craig who has been sacked seven times. And Moulton thought he had uh, number eight. And that's what happens when you grab a big, strong quarterback up around the shoulder, the shoulder pad, is that he has that tremendous leg strength that he's able to just flip Moulton off him and then get rid of the football, avoiding that seventh sack. Here you see Moulton got him dead to right, and he just turns the shoulder, flips him off, and then gets rid of the football, throwing it away. Well, he's been hit ten times in, in addition to those... Uh, seven quarterback sacks. Well, the Gators have been back there most of the afternoon. Auburn, close to a first down, but I think they're about one yard short. Pass is caught by Robinson, right in front of Tony George. And this is going to be an interesting situation where the Auburn Tigers can line up and try and get the first down, and they can try to hit the home run, knowing that they can come back and go for it on fourth down. So the Gators have to be careful here. Florida's defense is back on its heels as Auburn has driven the ball from their own 20. Option. Big defensive play by the Gators. Mark Keith Cooper is dropped by George and Cohen. It'll be fourth down for Auburn at the Florida 41-yard line. What you call going to the well one time too often as they come with the option. Willie Corn does a good job of forcing the pitch, and then the Gators 
to a good job of turning up Tony Jones, making sure that the running back don't get outside of him. Marquis Cooper forcing them to cut the football. Gators must be alert for a fake. Auburn thought they would catch Florida by surprise with the option, and it backfired on him. Jared Holmes will punt it from his own 45. He's had a spectacular day. This one is straight up the shoot. Takes an Auburn bounce as it moves away from the goal line, and the Tigers down it at the 15-yard line. Well, the Gator defense gave up a couple of first downs there. Almost had a couple of fumbles and an interception as well, and uh, finally is able to make the big third down stop, forcing Auburn to punt the football away. Tampa Bay Lightning are in action again Tuesday night. They'll travel to Philadelphia to take on the Flyers. Face off is set for 7.30 p.m. You can catch it all live right here on Sunshine Network. College football intensity at its highest level. Well, the Gators have had success at running the left side of that offensive line. They've done a good job blocking at Taylor, hitting those cracks just uh, at the right time. Well, on the left side, you got Cooper Carlisle, Ryan Kalick, and Wiley Rich, the center, and they're doing a good job of coming off the football. Rod Frazier, lead on the lead block, doing a good job of picking off the linebackers. You see it pick up the key of spikes there, getting Fred Taylor rolled the run. of the quarter. The Gators take the lead on a 97-yard touchdown drive in the third quarter, and they take a touchdown lead against Auburn into the final 15 minutes of football. Auburn Tigers going at it today at Jordan-Hare Stadium, and what a football classic it has been. Florida 17, Auburn 10, as we go to the last quarter of football from Auburn, Alabama. Gigantic implications on the line for both of these football teams. Noah Brindai, the senior quarterback in relief of Jesse Palmer, has done a marvelous job. He hands off to Fred Taylor, which has been a good idea all day long, and the Gators are close to a first down. Larry Vitell on the sideline. Well, David, it's appropriate that Florida picks up that first down by rushing the ball. The Gators have run the ball much better than Auburn today, and that's awfully important. Under Steve Spurrier in the 90s, Florida is 60-1 and one when they outrush their opponents. 60-1, and one, it's a dramatic stat. Oh, yeah, the one exception here at Auburn, 1993. Ooh. Well, you probably could have gone all day without bringing that one exception up to these uh, Gator fans watching in on Sunshine Network, but you kind of like the odds anyhow. Without a doubt, uh, they can continue to move the football, especially running, and it keeps this Auburn defense off balance. Nice hit. Jeff Dunlap, the redshirt freshman. He's out of Pearson, Georgia, big number 76. Ricky Neal there as well. Third quarter statistics from Auburn, Alabama. Gators had seven of those 12 first downs in the third quarter. Auburn only two first downs in the third quarter. There's the rushing totals. The passing yards almost dead even. And a quarterback sack. Just a, a part of the story. The pressure that Craig has put on has been put under all day. has been just uh, phenomenal. Auburn blitz. Good play call as the ball is up the middle of Taylor. There's nobody back there for Auburn. They sent people from the backfield. And Taylor had a lot of running room when he hit the linebackers area. Gators get a first down. And that's what happens when you come with the blitz from outside. You bring in both guys from outside, and if the back is able to pop it, good blocking. Fred Taylor does a good job of cutting back behind those big guys. There's no one there, and it forces Brad Ware from his deep safety position to make the play. Great Another play call, Matt. And, and good running by Fred Taylor. He sees that the crack is back behind him, so he cuts back to his left, picks up tremendous yardage for first down. Hole. And another Florida first down. 
The Gator offensive line, much maligned in recent weeks, is doing the job here at crunch time in Auburn, Alabama. Well, Spike, Spike makes the tackle, but watch the effort by Fred Taylor. He just drags this SEC linebacker, all SEC linebacker, for five or six yards and another Gator first down. 24 carries of the football. The Gator workhorse getting the job done. He's carried for 100 plus every game except last week in Baton Rouge. Taylor gets his 25th call. Taylor to the 32 yard line of the Auburn Tigers. The Gators pick up another first down. Well, Rob Payne is forced to make the play, but David, what happens with good backs? And, and even the great back is the more you give it to them. The third, fourth quarter, they get stronger. And here we see Fred Taylor just punishing defenders as he picks up his third first down. Just good, good vision as he comes out the back door. Good blocking. Everybody getting a hat on their man. And then Fred Taylor doing what he does best, running north and south. But Taylor needs and deserves a blow. He's on the sideline, and freshman Bo Carroll is in there. Now Carroll takes the handoff, and Carroll is crushed at the 30 by Ryan Taylor. And that's a, that's a young man that we would love to see him get outside because you're talking about a guy that has tremendous speed, young man out of Norristown, Pennsylvania, that any time he can get to the outside, he's hard to catch. That yeah, looked like he might have been juggling that ball as he crossed the line of scrimmage, but Bo managed to hold on to it. And he'll stay in there on second down and eight. Florida trying to build upon its seven-point lead early in the fourth quarter. And Carroll gets about three more to the 28-yard line. Leonardo Carson. Made the tackle for the Tigers. The clock ticking, 11.30 to play in the fourth quarter from Auburn, Alabama. The Gators are on the move. Well, here you, you're trying to run. You're trying to run your running back up the middle. And Bo Carroll got to to get outside, so he's got to hit it. Does the best he could, picking up three yards. Make a good third short situation. Red Taylor back in the game. He'll take the pitch. Fake the pitch back to Brendeis and Auburn. Stops the play. The Spurrier tried a little trickery and it did not work. <laughs> well, they wanted to run a little a little reverse off the quick pitch, but Spike was in the backfield and was right where Fred Taylor wanted to run. But you notice what Fred Taylor did there. He got as much as he could, got down, protected the football, allowing his team a chance to play on fourth down. And the Gators will go for it on fourth and six. Auburn will take the football. Jimmy Brumbaugh batted it away. Well, look like Noel Brendice is throwing into coverage as is. He was looking left the whole time. You catch this Tiger defense in a zone. It's batted down, but the, the KO fight was right there. It's blocked down by Jimmy Grunball. Well, Brendan brings the ball for the Gators out from uh, their 20-yard line deep into Auburn territory, but cannot score. The memory, the moment, the great play, and the great players. The Stoops. Boy, has his team performed well today, and they've got to step up again. Damian Craig presents quite a challenge for the last 10 minutes and 29 seconds for the Auburn Tigers. Craig keeps the ball, and it's deflected, I think, but still caught. Six 43 is the tight end. McLeod, Tony George made the tackle. That pass, uh, I thought, might have been just uh, tipped a little bit at the line of scrimmage, but maybe not. I don't know whether it was tipped, but uh, it shows you the points of Damian Craig as he just lobs it, it's tipped, and McLeod is still able to come up with the catch as the ball was tipped by Willie Cohen. Gain of about five or six. Damian Craig, so dangerous. The senior quarterback gives to Williams. 
Good tough running by Rusty Williams near the 40. That'll be an Auburn first down. Good tough running by Rusty Williams at the point of attack. Offensive line just tries to get a stalemate, and Rusty Williams keeps those legs moving. He's able to pick up the first down yardage. Williams hit as he crosses the 40. Picks up two yards, Peterson. That fast-pursuing Florida defense closes the gap in a hurry. Kind of surprising. You see the Auburn D offense trying to slow this Gator rush down by running the football. They toss it out to Rusty Williams, but that Gator defense slows to the football actively as you see Tico Brown coming in for the stop. Set up the screen play. Oh, the Gators are all over it. Javon Kurt had him snuffed out early. Well, Javon Kurt did a good job, nice job of flowing into the screen, fight off the block, and then as soon as the ball is caught, he's able to get upfield, and uh, Beasley does not know what hit it. Big hit by Kurt. Sophomore from Fort Myers. You talk about some talented defensive players and some young players on this Florida team. Now third down and 11. Quick toss. Solid tackle by Harris. No first down for Auburn. It'll be fourth down, and they'll have to kick it away with 7.45 and the clock ticking in the fourth quarter in Auburn, Alabama. Good solid defense by the Gators. Eli Williams does a super job of soon as the ball's in the air, reacting up, making the short tackle, not giving Bailey anywhere to run with the football. Excuse me, that's Mike Harris. Florida's defense steps up again. Garrett Holmes. His ninth cut of the game. Green found a little crease, and the Gators will have pretty good field position. Haven Fields made the tackle. And the Gators will have the football at their own 31, with 7.07 remaining. The Gators trying to get back on the winning track. The only way we're not going to let that happen is to follow you, all of us, everybody. The Gator men's tennis team will host Auburn, Georgia Tech, Purdue. It's the Fall UF Tournament, October 24th through the 26th. Mission four matches is free at Scotlander Tennis Stadium. Larry Mattel on the sideline, what have you got? Well, David, Florida finds itself in an unusual situation, trying to run out the clock with a narrow lead, and at 7.07 to go, that's a lot of time to try to use up. It's somewhat reminiscent of another game in 93. We've talked about Auburn 93 a lot. How about Georgia 93? In the mud in the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida saddled up Eric Rett and had long drives in the fourth quarter and beat a very talented Georgia team led by Eric Zier. Can they saddle up Fred Taylor for the final 7.07 today? Let's find out. Well, last year in Knoxville. Also, after bolting to a 35 to nothing lead against Tennessee, the Gators had to grind out a long fourth quarter drive, about a six minute drive in Knoxville, Neyland Stadium to seal a victory there. The Gators, that's how dominant they have been in the second half, and yet they lead by only a touchdown. Taylor looking for a crease. Just takes whatever he's given, and that's not too much. About four yards. Jimmy Brumbaugh, we've called his name a lot. Big 96. Been all over the field for the Auburn Tigers. Well, I tell you, you can't say enough about both of these teams. If we take another look. Well, this has been a well-played football game defensively by both football teams, and they just do a good job of stalemating the line of scrimmage, not giving Fred Taylor anywhere to run with the football. The Gators have both Carroll lined up left, and that's him in motion. 
They fake the handoff to him and give it to Taylor instead. And Fred somehow finds two or three yards across the 40 to the 42. How cleanly played has this game been? Only five penalty flags have been thrown. And there have been only two turnovers by Florida, one turnover by Auburn. Very well played football game. Very well played. When you think of the magnitude of this football game, usually the pressure gets to you and you have quite a few turnovers, penalties, a lot of mental mistakes, and today you're not seeing that. We have just reached the six-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Florida is third down and five at their own 41. Incomplete. Well, another official's racing in, and they're going to talk about it. And the ruling is incomplete, a trap. Number 27, Brad Ware almost had his third interception of the game. Well, we've been calling his name all day. A familiar number, number 27, as he makes a diving effort as the ball is tipped. And as you can see, he was not able to get his hands underneath. But a great job of acting as the ball hits the ground. Well, now, Beast Kareem is the first, I think, to step in there and make the call and then the officials concurred it's fourth down and Florida would have liked to have picked up at least a couple of first downs there but could not nice kick by Stevenson Marquise Cooper going to try and bring it back but the Gators have him surrounded and Auburn will take the ball inside its 25 yard line with five minutes and 32 seconds left Florida Gators 17 Auburn Tigers 10 A 45-yard punt by Stevenson and great coverage by the Gators special team. Gentlemen, our future critical possession late in the football game. Damian Craig. Fumble. Goodson coughs it up, picked up by Fred Weary. Weary still on his feet. Fred Weary near the Auburn five-yard line. Goodson caught the pass. And he was thrilled by Mike Peterson, who forced the fumble. Weary picks it up, and the Gators are in business inside the Auburn 10. And David, that shows you what can happen when you've got linebackers like Mike Peterson, Javon Kirk, Keith Kelsey, that can run. So the ball is thrown downfield to Tyrone Goodson, and Mike Peterson comes in from the backside and punches the ball out as he makes a big hit on him. Now watch Mike Peterson comes in, punches the ball out, Fred Ware picks it up, and this guy always wanted to be a running back. Watch him. He just does a tremendous job of not going down, spinning. He's trying to get into the end zone. He's looking for that touchdown. The Gators at the Auburn 6. The war court Fred Taylor to the 5, and that's it. Well, Auburn has been flirting with disaster. For much of the second half, the Gator defense has been just right there on the edge of making a big play time and time again, and finally the ball fell in their direction. Well, that time when the ball was shook loose, there was plenty of room on the sideline, and it didn't go out of bounds. There was nobody around the football, but Gator defenders, Fred Ware was able to pick it up and run it down to get the Gators first out inside the 10-yard line. Noah Brendan. The senior, second and five. In the round, Jacquez Green. He is in for the touchdown. And you have to love the way Jacquez ran with the football because he saw that he could not get outside and he cut it up behind his blocker and was able to avoid the first tackle and then dive into the end zone to put the Gators ahead, 13 points. Give it to Jack Wes. They start the ball game where he threw a touchdown. Now watch him cut back. And then lower his shoulders and dive for the end zone. Quez Green responsible for another Florida touchdown. Actually, Quez, he's been in on all three. He <laughs> threw one, he caught one, and he ran one. Well, someone told me earlier in the year that Quez is a playmaker, and we have saw that here today. Man, oh man, what a big day for Quez Green. Steve Spurrier feeling a little more comfortable, but still 4.27 left. And a dangerous Damian Craig. 
That quarterback for Auburn in this game is far from over, and the Gators, as you can tell from their sideline demeanor, they know it. They're still in a battle here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Another extra point is good, and Florida builds a 14-point lead. And the Gators, a collective white of the brow in Auburn, Alabama. They lead 24-10, late. And this. And this is what you look for from your big play guys. As you see Quezzy come into your pitcher, realize he can't get outside, turns it upfield, gets into the end zone before Brad Ware is able to bring him down. The defense did their job by taking it away. The offense did their job by putting points on the board. Now it's up to the special teams. we got a very dangerous return man back there, Marquis Cooper, and they've got to go down and make sure they keep him inside the 20-yard line. Time for the, the special teams to step up. Oh, what a hurdle this would be if Florida can hold on in the last 427. Coming off of the feet last week in Baton Rouge, playing an undefeated sixth-ranked football team on its home field without the starting quarterback. But there's still almost four and a half minutes to play. Marquise Cooper on the return, and the Gators bag him at about the 23-yard line. Let's check back on the sideline with Larry. Larry. Well, David, as the Florida defense takes to the field now with a 14-point lead, you think of that Tennessee game you referred to earlier where Florida allowed a late score and the game got a little closer than they wanted. Two late scores against Kentucky. Those have been things the Florida coaching staff has not been happy with. I guarantee you Bob Stoops has made it clear to his guys, no late scores this afternoon. They can win the game on this possession. Well, that's absolutely correct. If Auburn can put it in the end zone, they can onside kick it. And uh, as we've seen earlier this year in Lexington, Kentucky, we know anything can happen when teams start onside kicking the football. And the key is, do they come after them or do they sit back and play the soft zone and wait for them to make a mistake? Ooh, incomplete. Craig, a wonderful job of not taking another sack. He's been sacked seven times today and has avoided probably a half dozen or more others. Well, I think they called it a sack because the official oh, had it down it in the grass. They called it in the grass. Willie Rogers gets credit for this one, and the Gators have sacked Craig eight times today, Nat. And, and this, is a, this is another coverage sack as Craig has plenty of time. Willie Rogers is able to get off the blocker, and he's got him wrapped up there, and the, the official, trying to save him any more wear down on his body, calls him in the grass. Grass. goes down again again 54 willie rogers craig inside the 10 yard line now is looking at third down and extremely long yardage well the senior out of, out of miami willie rogers knows that craig has to throw the football and he just beats his his guy inside beats Tito james inside and goes straight to the quarterback and Craig is down on the turf again. Bobby Stoops is loving every minute of it right now. The clock ticking down. Auburn going the wrong direction. And Auburn takes a delay of game. They did not get the snap off. The 25-second clock ran out. And the Tigers will be penalized again. Delay of game. On the offense. There you see Coach Kerry Bowden, but David, what a difference a week makes. You know, last week, at the end of the ball game, the Gators were going backwards like this in a clutch situation where they needed to score, and now you see the Gators reversing the tide and pushing Auburn backwards. Auburn needs to get to the 35. Pico Brown picks it off. Pico Brown looking for a block. Brown inside the 10 at about the 8. And that ought to just about do it for the Florida Gators. Still 2.28 left. 
But the pressure on Craig finally got to him. He threw a bad pass deep out of his end zone. And the man playing free safety, Tico Brown, was there waiting. But, David, the beauty of it is they are able to apply this pressure with the front four. You got a four-man rush. Craig feeling the pressure as they start to push him back, and he unloads it. And as always, Tico Brown is sitting back there reading the quarterback all the way as the ball fails over Tyrone Gibson's head. And I must say, a good job of running with the football after the interception on Tico Brown. And there you see a very happy Bobby Soup as his defense had won this football game. Oh, Brendice fumbled the snap. That could have been disastrous back at the 10-yard line, but... He was able to fall on it. Brown's fourth interception this season is eighth career-wise at Florida. Well, you cannot say enough about Florida's defense. They, as uh, we said early, that the defense, it looked like, when we saw Jesse Palmer struggling, it looked like Florida's defense was going to have to win the football game. And they've done it, but also, offensively, give credit to Noah Brindice, who came in, settled this team down when it looked like they were shaky and might not be able to recover. Brindice came into the football game, took this team 97 yards, and that turned it around. And, and what he did more than anything is he came in and got away from making the mistakes. When you make mistakes, you normally lose the ball game. And what he did was came in and stopped the offense from making the mistakes that were giving the Auburn Tigers good field positions. You see Taylor going wide for good yardage. But the thing that Noah Brindise did, as you said, he came in, he steadied the offense, he's a senior, came up, made the right call. Might have been a little early for Jesse Palmer to get his first shot. And Fred Taylor running behind a, an offensive line and has uh, really come up big today, has put up some very impressive numbers career-wise against Auburn. Today, he's over 140 yards on the afternoon. And gets another call. Inside the five as time continues to wind down in Auburn, Alabama. Just 125 left. The Tigers still have two timeouts remaining, but they're down by two touchdowns. And look like a beaten team out on the field. Yeah, it's kind of amazing that uh, the Tigers have not called timeout to try and get the ball back but I think they've uh, accepted the fact that they've lost this football game well Steve Spurrier looks like he's going to get out of here by the skin of his teeth I tell you what give him credit and give this football team credit because they have the odds stacked against them here today play clock is down to one the Gators barely got the snap off and Taylor trying to make a play again is buried at the five Here's a, a statistic as time continues to tick down. Auburn rushing yardage today, minus 28, which is an all-time Auburn football low. Well, in the history of Auburn football, they've been playing football around here since uh, just beyond the Garden of Eden, I think. Well, I tell you what, David, most people will look at those nine sacks or ten sacks and say, well, that had a lot to do with it. But even when they were not being sacked, they were not able to run the football, and it's just been a complete effort by this defense of shutting this Auburn team down in the second half. Auburn will let the clock tick out. Fred Taylor gets one more crack. Fitting that Taylor would carry on the last play of the game. He was the workhorse. And the Gators have done it. They're hoping for a sixth consecutive Eastern Division Championship. Still very much alive. And give credit to Bob Stoops. Florida's defense was magnificent today in Jordan Hare Stadium. Steve Spurrier's fun and gun offense just good enough to win the ball game. Well, one of the things that Steve Spurrier said after last week's ball game was they got out played, they got out coached. That did not happen today. The, the Gators outplayed the Tigers, and without a doubt, Steve Spurrier, Bobby Stoops, and this Gator coaching staff did a tremendous job of getting these guys ready to play. Well, Coach Spurrier made a big decision at the 13-10 mark in the third quarter, and that was to put this young man into the game. Jesse Palmer had been ineffective. The freshman struggling, and Noah Brindis was the guy that came in and directed the Gators. 97 yards for the touchdown. And let's uh, go down on the field now to Larry Vitell, who's standing by with Noah Brindis. All right, thanks a lot, David. Noah, what a moment. What does this day mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. It really does. Uh, I worked hard for this, and... I'm just glad Coach gave me an opportunity, and, you know, we played well together. I didn't win this game. The offensive line and Fred and our defense won this game, and 
I'm just so thankful right now. I'm so happy that I finally got a chance, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be a memory. No, what was your reaction when you found out Jesse was going to start? Was it hard? Uh, yeah, it was hard, but, you know, at the same time, I've been around here for a long time, and I know that Coach Burr is a guy that's going to let the best guy play, and Jesse, Jesse didn't do a bad job. He went in there and did what he could, and uh, I think we just needed a spark, and, you know, I went in there, and, and we moved the ball down the field, and I tell you what, our O-line did great. Fred Taylor's the best running back in the country, and our defense is great. So, you know, when you have that, those kind of things around you, it's just hard not to lose. You broke the tie on a touchdown pass past their play three. Talk about that. Uh, it was just a little slant. You know, we knew they were blitzing a lot. And actually, that play, they didn't blitz. And Quezzy just got open. I mean, he's an amazing receiver. And I threw it out right in, I threw it out in front of him, and he went and got it. Hey, congratulations. Hey, thanks a lot, Larry. Great day for Noah Brindice. He's been waiting a long time for the chance. And boy, did he catch in his opportunity. David? Well, I probably like a lot of Gators out there, Nat, and you and me, we got a big smile on our face just uh, just looking at a guy like that who has a chance to come up in his senior year. He waits five years. He comes through at Auburn, Alabama, a nationally televised game. What a job by Brendeis and the Gators, and the Gators come out with a victory. Gator football on Sunshine Network is brought to you by First Union. When it comes to service,